the title is, and that pretty much tells you the topic, that uh, it's Ayn Rand and Enlightenment Attitudes Towards Religion. Um, I've had an interest the, the past couple of years in working on Ayn Rand's conception of philosophy, particular attitude or views towards it. And since I heard, uh, I was told the theme of the, uh, of the conference or the, is, is the Enlightenment, I thought this would be uh, a way to uh, approach these, these issues. So it's now, I should say that although the topic is Ayn Rand and Enlightenment attitudes towards uh, religion, I'm really focused on um, faith uh, because faith really is at the core of what, you know, at the heart of religion. And by faith, I mean the conscious acceptance of a belief in the absence of and or in defiance of, you know, evidence, um, sensory evidence and, and reasoning. Uh, so that's um, in a nutshell or a coconut shell, uh, that's, uh, that's my uh, topic. But I want to look at a number of different attitudes towards faith, especially in the Enlightenment. And then I'm going to bring in Ayn Rand um, in greater detail and contrast her with that. So uh, contrast her views with um, the better of the earlier ones. Now, if the Renaissance is the rebirth of reason, right, that's what it's about. It's, it's in the Enlightenment with um, where where reason really comes of of age, and what you get. So um, two things happen, I think, culturally that are significant. Um, on the one hand, you get religious um, thinkers for the first time in ages. Uh, pressure is put on them to um, to show a little respect for reason, or at least to purport uh, to to uh, to um, respect reason. On the other hand, what happened was it left room or it created room for the, the less religious or the non-religious people to um, present, to articulate their views, their views about religion, and including their critiques of religion and faith. So I want to, in the talk, however, focus on the better figures. And um, I'll likely focus on two, and these are, I would regard as genuine enlightenment, uh, figures who had a genuine, genuine enlightenment spirit attitudes towards reason and faith. And the first would be Thomas Jefferson, particularly uh, one particular famous letter of his, but then some of his religious, his writings on, on church and state. Uh, and then another one who may not be well known to our audience would be uh, W.K. Clifford, a British thinker of the of the 19th century, maybe that's not officially the Enlightenment, but it's certainly a, a carryover. Uh, and both of those figures are really excellent on um, the nature of reason and uh, what's wrong with faith, right? So I want to uh, talk about them, and I think they're both very good using these two figures. These they're they're quite excellent views as a backdrop. I then want to investigate the much more fundamental, radical cr uh, critique of faith that we find in the writings of Ayn Rand and explain why um, in Atlas Shrugged, she refers to faith, uh, what people, she says, consider a shortcut to knowledge, why it is in fact a short circuit destroying the mind. And she has a view, particularly in her, in his, in her most mature works in Atlas Shrugged and beyond that, that the, the whole conception of faith um, is it, it's a destroyer of the mind in, in, in a way that um, even the better enlightenment figures, I think, never identified. And, uh, and so, um, as far as I know, this conception of faith goes beyond all the earlier critiques. And, and so that's what I hope to accomplish. So um, l highlighting uh, what is uh, special or, or unique about Ayn Rand's approach, but um, at the same time, viewing it as part of this enlightenment um, uh, um, resistance to and ultimately rejection of or critique of religion.